If I'm gonna be standing over boiling water all day today, I cannot wear a suede shirt. I wore this thinking that it was very holiday. I don't know. <laughs> I look like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Vaughn. I'm here at the NYT Cooking Kitchen Studio and today is all about potatoes. The mashed variety. I'm gonna be cooking through Julia Moskin's mashed potato recipe, which is probably the most popular mashed potato recipe that the Times has. In the world of gastronomy, there are a lot of opinions about what constitutes a well-mashed potato. Some people like fluffy mashed potatoes, some people like creamy mashed potatoes, chunky, skin on, pureed. What I'm gonna do today is I'm going to make Julia's recipe one time through. So steamy. And then I'm gonna try some of the comments that you all suggested and how you prepare your mashed potatoes in order to see how those techniques change the mashed potato. And then hopefully, what you take away from this video is that a mashed potato is good no matter what. Okay, I've, I'm gonna change this shirt. You know, they say dress for the job you want and not the job you have, and obviously, I still look like a potato sack, so. <laughs> this recipe calls for two tablespoons of salt in the water. What that's gonna do is it's going to flavor the potato from the inside out, or the outside in, I guess, depending on your osmosis in your kitchen. So this recipe calls for both russet potatoes and Yukon gold potatoes. And when I was talking to Julia yesterday in the office about this, she ultimately found that for her, the combination of the two really yielded a strong result because you were able to get that fluffiness that comes from a russet potato and that kind of creaminess that comes from a Yukon gold along with the flavor. Honestly, the worst part of Thanksgiving is peeling potatoes. Sometimes the eyes linger inside the potato, so then you have to peel down even further into it. No way. <laughs> okay, the peelers in North Carolina do not have that. <laughs> You can for sure peel and quarter your potatoes and keep it in the water for up to like four hours. They'll stay like this, they won't oxidize. They're not gonna take on a bunch of water right now at this stage. And obviously, hot water, be very careful when you're adding this. These will cook through in about 15 to 20 minutes. And then once those are done, you kind of want to have everything else all ready because you want to make sure that your potatoes are hot when you mash them. So while our potatoes are boiling, I'm gonna get the milk mixture heated up and just kind of keep it over a low heat while those finish cooking. I just wanna have the butter and the milk mixed together. And I just kinda wanna keep it warm. I'm going to drain these potatoes in a colander and then I'm going to return them back to the pot to dry them out a little bit. With a kitchen towel or oven mitts, whatever you want, shake them around a little bit. And this action is drying the potatoes out. As you mash it, you want less moisture in there so that it readily absorbs the cream more. This is a potato ricer. It is kind of a niche tool. It reminds me of like one of those Play-Doh extruders, which I love to make hair. You don't want to put too much in there. Ah. And what's nice about this is that you're not really working the potatoes too much in an effort to mash them. If you like a, dare I say, the worst word in the English language, chunky mashed potato, um, don't use a ricer. Use a hand masher. Julia says to add about half of it at first, just to kind of see where you're at. The milk and butter is there to add a little smoothness and some flavor. I think I'm gonna add the rest of it just because I really do like a, a creamy mashed potato. There are some different indications in this recipe which is kind of neat. It's like it, Julia's saying, if you like a fluffy mashed potato, stop here. Or for a whipped mashed potato, put this in a stand mixer and whip it up a little bit. I'm gonna stop right about here, but I am going to do the most important part, which is stop, taste it, and assess it for salt. 
many people just don't add enough salt to them. And it needs a lot of salt. She doesn't call for pepper, but you know, do what you want. They can take a lot of salt. Still needs more salt. There we go. I'm going to dot it with butter and maybe a little, a little pepper, maybe a little flaky salt. Get a little fun, as they would say in Ireland. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna take a little taste. I mean, I already tasted them, but now this has like the butter and the pepper on it. That's like a wonderful mashed potato. It's very creamy. It's pretty fluffy at the same time. I'm excited to launch into though some of the comments on this recipe and see what people have done to amend the recipe to their tastes. This recipe comes to us from Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Julia Moskin. And she and I actually talked a little bit yesterday about potatoes, specifically this article. The secret? It's not the potatoes. You know, in it she says that they are good cooked in plain water, salted water, water mixed with milk, wine, or chicken stock. They're good made with yellow fleshed, red skinned, all purpose, fingerling, organic, new dug, and supermarket potatoes. Potatoes mashed the easy way in a stand mixer and the hard way in a ricer were more or less equally delicious. And I think that that really is the ethos of what we're getting at today. I wanna go through the gamut of every type of mashed potato and how they react to certain methods of cooking so that you can take from this an informed decision of how you're gonna make your mashed potatoes this Thanksgiving. The first comment on here that I'm about to read is super interesting. Daniel says, baked potatoes make better mashed potatoes and use less energy and salt. I mean, Daniel, thank you for your service. Coco the talking ape, my friend Coco. Bake the potatoes, do not wrap in foil. Slit and scoop the potato. Coco the talking ape also agrees, baking the potato. I don't, I don't need to keep harping on it. I hate peeling potatoes. When you bake a potato, the skin kind of naturally separates. So it'll be pretty easy to peel. I think that all around baking could be a good option for the peeling haters of the world like me. Four tablespoons of butter, not enough for two and a half pounds of potatoes. Maybe 12 tablespoons of butter is enough, but maybe not. Honestly, I'm kind of on board with that. Mo butta, mo bitta. Julia Child's ghost, I'm 1000% gonna be haunted after this. For what it's worth, I use a ratio of one pound butter per two pounds potatoes with plenty of salt, hold the milk. My family loves them. Huh? That's four sticks of butter for the same amount of potatoes. Mo butta, mo bitta. Paul, really interesting. The Yukon Gold are too sweet for real mashed potatoes. I like the balance that the sweetness offers, but that's not necessarily the mashed potato that I grew up with. Buttermilk instead of milk, that's interesting. Substitute sour cream for the milk, creme fraiche. Boil them in chicken broth and several garlic cloves. Add crushed rosemary for thyme. I also throw chives in for more flavor. Jenny says, what about nutmeg? That's it. Uh, Suzanne says, the best potato masher is a teenage boy with a strong arm and a good heart who loves hanging out in the kitchen. Mrs. T said, the comments are making me smile. Everyone thinks their way is best. Mrs. T, you hit the nail on the head. The comments are making me smile as well. And everyone does think that their way is best. But like, I would try any of these people's potatoes and I'd be like, it's a damn good mashed potato. To me, actually, what I'm most excited to try out today are the mashing methods. Everyone has always just told me that like you have to have a ricer. It just feels a little inaccessible. Like I myself like went home for Thanksgiving and I was like, oh, mom, you don't have a ricer? And like bought a like $50 ricer. And she was like, I'm not paying you back for that thing. But I'm excited to try the mashing methods. So I'm gonna do baked potatoes, just russet potatoes, different mashing methods, different sources of fat in there in the way of cream, sour cream, creme fraiche, flavorings, and then I'm gonna make my ultimate version based on those learnings. Should we get to it? Rather than peeling and boiling them, I'm gonna try baking the potatoes. I'm also gonna do half recipes because it's just a lot of potatoes. I got one russet there. I'll bring out a Yukon, why not? a GMC Yukon Gold. I'm gonna work with these while they're hot. So it might mean that I burn the 
it out of my hands, but great. And the skin is coming away super, super easily. You have really nice separation between the potato and the skin. Ha, ha, there we go. Whew. Maybe I'll scoop this side out. My hands are a little burny. And again, like the important part of all this is to make sure that your potatoes stay really hot. Beautiful. Wow. A Yukon Gold isn't necessarily like known as a baking potato. The good thing is that at least the skins are coming off really easily. <laughs> it's hot. Glad I'm not wearing that suede shirt now. Hello. That was even easier. These, you don't necessarily have to dry out because they weren't boiling in any water. They're still quite hot. So what's interesting about baking the potatoes, they're not taking on any water, so the milk mixture will actually probably absorb maybe even better, but you're not putting them in salted water, so the potatoes aren't really getting seasoned. So I probably will have to add a good amount of salt to this. So these are my baked potatoes. They look, I mean, it looks very similar to the other ones. These are very good. They were pretty easy. Yeah, I had to handle them while they were hot, but I scooped them out pretty easily. They needed more salt, for sure, because there was no flavor in the potato themselves. Really, I think that some people are like, bake them, they don't take on water. But like, with this method of kind of drying them out a little bit, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna poke some holes in this. That's to help make sure that the potato doesn't explode in the microwave. I think that microwaving is good if you're like cooking for yourself. My singular microwave potato is done and the skin is coming off like very easily. Yes, it is very hot. A smarter person than me would probably just use a spoon to scoop this out. So I'm gonna just rice this potato, make sure it still mashes well. Hmm. Perfect little like dorm room hat. Or if you're not a college student and you're like me and you just wanna enjoy a mashed potato on a weeknight, I dare say that worked well. This right here that I'm gonna do is actually all russet potatoes. I wanna see like if I continue with the recipe as written, do I really tell that much of a difference? So I have these in a low pot like I did the first time and I'm just gonna kinda shake them around a little bit to make sure they get really dry. So I'm just gonna go in here, rice the russets. Since I'm doing a half recipe, I'm just gonna put two tablespoons of butter in here and that residual heat from the milk is just gonna melt this butter, which is nice. Honestly, these seem like even fluffier. It needs a lot more salt, but I'm liking where we're going. Visually, like the Yukon Golds are gold. These are a little whiter, a little bit more cloud-like. Those are good. These give me like KFC mashed potato vibes, which I love. The all russet is a little bit fluffier, but I'm not really missing that like Yukon Gold flavor. I think a lot of that flavor I could get back in adding a little bit more butter. This is a very potato-y mashed potato. I really like this one. I am very intrigued to see what the difference is in texture with a hand mixer and a hand masher, like an like a old school style potato masher. So I've got some boiled potatoes here. Just over a low heat, I'm gonna kind of get some of that moisture out. So now I'm gonna mash these by hand. Honestly, just as easy, maybe a little cheaper. You do kind of have to like stop every once in a while, give yourself a little tap. Who, who was the person who commented about the teenager with a strong arm? Suzanne had a point. This is kind of fun, you know? If I were back in my teens, I would definitely sign up for this job. Okay. It's coming together just like the rice ones did. Okay, so I have like maybe one lump in there that like escaped the grip of my hand. Other than that, there's really no big lumps in here. Is a ricer a scam? Like, this like worked just fine. Like they're still pillowy and soft. Honestly, there's like not a big textural difference. There's a reason that this thing exists. 
and it is to mashed potatoes, and it is totally fine. Now I'm going to use a hand mixer, which is what my mom always makes mashed potatoes with, and they always say it's great. So let's see. Let's see if we can actually tell a difference. Honestly, you could probably just mash these through the colander, and it would literally do the same thing that um, a ricer does. All right, going in. Now I'm gonna add my milk and butter mixture here. Wow, looks like frosting, like buttercream. These are very creamy. I'm gonna give these a taste. Honestly, those are really good too. They're not gummy. People think that if you use a hand mixer, they will be gummy. There's maybe some small, small little pockets of potato that are a little distinguishable in some bites. The rest of it's very, very smooth. It's got very minimal lumps. I've got a mixture of Russet and Yukon Gold in here, just to stay true to like the original recipe in terms of seeing what we could add for flavor. All right, I'm gonna try to work quickly while this is still hot. So this was a comment that I saw a lot on there, which was about using buttermilk rather than regular milk. Let's see, I kinda added way too much, didn't I? Kind of a one-for-one -one swap. I did eyeball it and maybe added a little too much. Oh. That was heavy cream in that one. Uh, yeah, okay. Because <laughs> I was gonna say, that's really delicious. <laughs> it's like, that's not buttermilk. That is rich. That is like summer home, Lake Como rich. I love it. All right, so I got the rest of my reserved potato. I heated up my buttermilk, a little splash. So yeah, this one's definitely buttermilk. I can smell it. Not my favorite. <laughs> it's fine. The heavy cream was really, really rich, and the buttermilk was like a little too tangy. If you were gonna go those roots, I would maybe do like a half and half, half buttermilk, half whole milk, or like half heavy cream, half whole milk. But I mean, they're both good in their own right. I'm gonna mix the recipe pretty much to how the original recipe is, but just adding in some creme fraiche to one and some sour cream to the other. I am gonna do half in one and half in the other and add my fun little extras in there. Okay, ooh, we've got creme fraiche. Let's try like a maybe a, an eyeballed tablespoon. I mean, it really is making it quite creamy. Now my creme fraiche I did have at about room temperature because like adding something cold to this, it would seize up. I'll add a, I'll, let me add another little dollop in there. For me, if I'm like, want to taste something, I want to taste it. Okay, yum. I'm just gonna grab a little bite of this. It's quite good. It like kind of alters it a little bit for me and takes it out of that like Thanksgiving mashed potato. I love creme fraiche on like an actual potato. I love creme fraiche on a potato chip with a little caviar. Mm, that's perfect. That's living. I don't know if I need it in my mashed potato though. I don't know, but it was good. All right, let me add a little bit of sour cream. We got the squeeze guy. Oh yeah? Really? I think it's still. Ah yeah, no, it's got a little pop dot. I've not seen, I've not seen that before. Oh, it came out fast. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> I really hate that. The sour cream was kind of giving a little like a baked potato vibe, which was nice. It didn't do much for me like texturally necessarily, but it added a little bit of a tang like the buttermilk did. The creme fraiche was also really nice in the way that the heavy cream added like a little bit of richness. That one also imparts richness, but like I don't know if I need either of those in order to have a really good baked potato. Good to go.
Wow, so I started with the original recipe and then worked my way through all the tests. So I think for my ultimate version, two pounds of russet potatoes. I'm gonna brown butter. I'm going to actually steep a mixture of whole milk and heavy cream with some herbs and some garlic. Though I kind of bitched about the peeling, I kind of like peeling and boiling in salted water because I like seasoning that potato from the inside out. In terms of mixing, I'm going to use a ricer. That's just because I have it. If I didn't have it, and when I write this recipe up, I'm gonna say mix however you want, using a hand masher, a hand mixer, or a potato ricer, mash your potatoes while they're still hot. Cool, should we do it? We have to wait for the water to boil. I'm so excited about this one, like, holy you know what? That looks insane. That's like a Thanksgiving mashed potato. Gonna be an absolute monster and just go for it. Gonna get a chive, dip in a little brown butter, maybe put like a, a crispy shallot on top. That's insane. That's really good. It really has so much flavor in it. Like, even just steeping that cream for five to 10 minutes, imparts so much of that herbaceousness. The brown butter really does add a lot. Like it adds this kind of like, ooh, am I on a yacht? <laughs> it makes you feel fancy. And I lit some candles, I set the mood, put the suede shirt back on, it's happy Thanksgiving. Julia's recipe honestly is a perfect recipe and it's so versatile. And if you go in the comments and you read them and you're like, uh, like all these people are telling me to do all these different things, just go with what your heart tells you to do. If you know that you like the flavor of sour cream, hey, try adding a little sour cream. If you like a really creamy mashed potato, double the amount of cream, double the amount of butter. If you like a really fluffy mashed potato, go with Julia's original recipe. I think that the moral of the story today really is that whatever way you you want to make mashed potatoes is a perfect way to make mashed potatoes. You can find Julia's recipe, an amazing recipe. You can find my recipe, hopefully an amazing recipe to you, on NYT Cooking. Happy Thanksgiving.